For this demonstration of wind chill configuration management, we will be working with the Polaris snowmobile, starting here in the product structure. This structure is our overloaded bill of materials, or 150% bomb. This product structure is organized into systems, and the systems into modules that are organized into a logical structure for this product. Let's expand this by a few levels to see that this overloaded bomb includes systems, modules, and variants which are your different options and choices. And there's also rules applied to all of this to control the choices that users across Windshell will be making as they create new configurations of this product. The overloaded bomb also overloads the visualization. And just like when you work with any ordinary part in Windshell, the structure and the visualization work together. You've already seen how all of the options are laid out in the structure and on the visualization, it's the same idea. You can select any one of the different options or variants for any one of these modules, so you can get a graphical understanding of the different choices for each one of these modules on this product. So if this is what the overloaded product looks like, what about a configured one? In the filters, we can access and open all of the different configurations that have been created and saved for this product. We'll look at the 600 Indy in this particular case. Right away, you'll notice a few things. The visualization is updated. It's not overloaded anymore. This represents the choices that have been made for this configuration. And the same goes for the structure. Rather than seeing all the choices laid out within each one of these modules, you're just seeing the one that someone has gone in and selected to create this new configuration. As they were selecting it, they were adhering to the rules that have been laid out so that as they create this configuration, they can be assured that this is going to be a manufacturable product. If we want to look at one of the options for this configuration, the standard hood, as we expand this, the structure might look a little bit familiar. It has gray gear icons for WT parts, and that's because in order to build these configurations, we're using the same parts and assemblies that we would use on any other product, any non-configurable product, and potentially on other products you have across Windshell. If we go ahead and open this up, what you'll see is this subassembly is a very good example of a part that could be used across products, not just configurations. This might be the same gauge that we use on our Polaris dirt bikes or on the Polaris four-wheelers. You can see everywhere a part is being used just from that one where used tab. What's interesting about this part is it does a good job of showing wind chills part-centric focus. And when we say part-centric focus, the idea is to have a fully defined digital product to have real visibility and understanding of your products. You have to be able to see everything that comes together to define these objects, mechanical designs, electronic components, schematics, the hardware you're buying from different suppliers, and the software that makes these objects function. All of that information is being captured in this part-centric bill of material and then it's carried with this part anytime we use it in any capacity across Windchill. That way, we can ensure when changes happen, you have a complete understanding of everything affected by the change, and they can update that content as needed. Back in the product structure, there's another subassembly that we're gonna look at. And in this case, it's going to be the skis on the front of our snowmobile. Along with the configurations, we also need to capture replacement parts. And with replacement parts, we're able to identify them as either alternate or substitute parts and then interchange those anywhere we need to. Those interchanges can be defined across Winchell as a whole or strictly within this individual product. Now that we've seen where all the variations are viewed, how do they get there to begin with? All of that is done through our option pool and our option sets. Opening up the Details tab, you can see all of the options possible for this product. It's an overloaded set of options used across all the product sets. And there's also rules and the compatibility matrix to see visually how everything comes together. If you look at the structure on the left, which are simply your different modules laid out, we can take any one of these. Let's say here we want to look at the engine, specifically the 600 Clean Fire engine. By clicking it, we can get a where use table that shows everywhere that this particular configuration of this engine is being used 
across different configurations, across different option sets, and across individual products everywhere from one screen. Now that we've seen BOM management, how we manage the options and variants, let's create a configuration. This is what you're going to manufacture and sell. To start creating the configuration, we will start by using the Edit Filter tool. We can go through this list and just start selecting what we want. It's very easy to do, and if there are rules in place, that will limit what we're able to select. As we go through and select all of these options, it's going to adjust the structure on the left to reflect the choices that we've made. And the visualization is also going to update to reflect those same choices. Once this has been created, you can save this filter, give it a name so you can call it up later, and reuse it. We can also create a new configuration specification with a parts list that can be sent to an ERP system to complete the customer order. Once we've created this new variant, the next thing we want to do is compare this to other configurations or maybe compare it to a previous baseline we created to see how this configuration has progressed or changed over time. The way I'll set this up is for the 600 Indy snowmobile to be listed on the left and the 800 switchback to be on the right. These are two completely different configurations, and this side-by-side -side comparison that Windchill generates will give us a full understanding of the differences between these two configurations. It's going to do it from a part structure perspective at the top and a visualization perspective at the bottom. Going through one by one, we see each one of the differences between these two configurations of this product. Once the new configuration is complete, we generate a report of the selected choices, which is going to be the final bill of material, and we can take that and send it to our ERP system in order to complete the order.